Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem Smith number. So it's a medium level question and it's the problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks. The topic tags of this question are mathematical series, C event algorithms and the company tags are not actually mentioned and also I was not able to find them. So that's it. And going to the question now. So given a number n, the task is to find out whether this number is a Smith number or not. And what is the definition of a Smith number? A Smith number is a composite number. So whose sum of digits is equal to the sum of digits of its prime factors. Okay, so every number might be having some sort of prime factors and you need to find the digits uh, some of the digits of individual prime factor and add them up and if that sum equals to the sum of the digits of the composite number that's been given to you then you return true or one else return false or zero okay so that is the question and we'll go through these examples in brief and expected time complexity is o of n log n and the space complexity is o of n and the constraints are n goes up to 10 power 5 so these are the things that have been mentioned in this uh, particular you know uh, question so before we proceed further i would like to you know mention a few points i know it's been three days since i uploaded any video because i was uh, you know busy traveling from my college and IT Calicut to my hometown, Vishakapatnam. So it's between, it's a journey between two states, Kerala and Andhra Pradesh. So like, you know, you might be knowing what sort of arrangements I need to do, etc. And also I was busy with my end semester examinations and also I was handling some placement activities. I'm the representative of it. So at my college, so like totally packed up schedule. So if in case I would have worked on these things, I would not be very efficient towards those activities. So that is one of the reason I thought of stopping it for two, three days. Now I'm came back to my home. So I'll be consistently uploading the video solutions, but blessings of God might be and also second thing I saw your comments like I was pretty like like it was really overwhelming for me because uh, I saw people are telling that they like the analogy that I put forward in my videos that I use in my videos and also clear cut explanation that I provide uh, maybe the best than the other YouTubers uh, better than the other YouTubers I would say so I appreciate that love and etc thank you so much so that's one of the motivation factor that I would like like that's carrying forward uh, and making me upload videos regularly and if you observe, I never ask you people to like my video or subscribe to my channel. Like you would have found those terms and keywords in my description of the video or in the description of the video or the about of the channel, but I never asked them explicitly in the video because I know that if a particular video is liked by a person, he or she would definitely like it. He or she would definitely consider subscribing the channel. So I need not explicitly mention them and push them doing into all these things. So I, I really, uh, you know, refrain myself from, you know, taking any such uh, stands and asking you people to do it. I never do that. So it's up to you people to show, show your support and love if you really love this particular content that i'm uploading else it's fine you can just give your comments critics i'll definitely go through them and i'll definitely you know upgrade myself update myself that's that's very evident we're all humans at the end of the day right so this is the question i hope like it's been a bit lengthy uh, content as of now but i'll stop right now and we'll proceed further with the solution okay so we have gone through the question now let us go through this uh, uh, solution now so <clears throat> this is the test case that has been given okay so i have uh, you know exempted test case one that's not very uh, you know uh, giving you some clear hints about what the question is but second one is actually giving you so n equal to 378 okay n is 378 and what is it doing see the output is one that means true why is it true the explanation so 378 is basically 2 power 1 into 3 power 3 into 7 power 1 isn't it so n is a smith number is saying that it is a smith number since 3 plus 7 plus 8 what are the digits of the composite number that has been given to you 3 plus 7 plus 8 and what is that equal to 18 isn't it and <clears throat> now you need to find the digits some of the digits of your prime factors so what are the prime factors that are available list them out 2 3 3 3 7 isn't it so there are three threes one two and one seven all these are prime factors it's not like you'll not be repeating the uh uh, numbers no you need to repeat them you need to repeat them okay three individually is a uh, prime factor and another three can also be an, an, another prime factor that's important to be noted okay so this and this totally how many what is the sum of these digits nine and this is two and this is seven again nine plus seven plus two that's uh, basically equal to 18 itself isn't it so yes 18 and equal to 18 so that's the reason we return true i hope you people understood what are we actually trying to do okay so this is the brief explanation of the you know uh, explain uh, example that's been given so now let us frame the approach so before we proceed further uh, also, I'd like to uh, mention uh, these points. I focus on two things for a solution that I'm going to upload on uh, like the video that I'm going to upload. The solution is unique to a greater extent and it is most optimal to a greater extent as well. So whatever the videos that I upload on my channel, I make sure the solution that I'm explaining are the most unique ones like that you usually do not find in some of the YouTube channels or editorials. I do that. Second one, it's the most optimal one. Even right now, the solution that we are going to use that doesn't use sieve. Okay, that doesn't use sieve. That doesn't use some complex, uh, you know, concepts, concepts or something else. You would have found all those things in uh, various editorials and stuff. We'll be uh, using a particular concept from a number theory from the number theory and i even explain the proof you need not worry for that and it you know shortens our code to a very greater extent and it's most beautiful code i've ever seen and also <clears throat> 
uh, the, it is also most optimal one because in the thing that they are mentioned complexity analysis they mentioned that time complexity must be off and log n yes we are following that and optional space is often but we are making sure our solution doesn't take any extra space it's done in often so that's what i've made uh, clearly taken care of and it's optimal okay the concept that we are going to use here is or the theorem that we are going to use here is there are two theorems the first one is every composite number every composite number uh, n let us assume it is n have some of its prime factors or have its prime factors prime factors less than or equal to root n so this is first concept second concept is there might be some cases where you do not find only one prime factor that's less than or equal to n and that says that there can exist there can exist at most at most one prime factor one prime factor of n fn that is greater than or equal to root n okay prime factor of n that is greater than or equal to or greater than okay that is greater than let us assume this is greater than okay greater than root n so here it says that first theorem says that every composite number will be having its prime factors okay so there might be cases like all of its prime factors are less than or equal to root n or there exists only one prime factor that is greater than root n okay so that is the, the that is the thing these two theorems are actually talking about so what are the proofs so the relevant articles are latest in the description. You people can go through it. And also I'll be explaining the proof here. Okay. So let us assume you're taking a number n. Okay. And you're telling that it's a composite number. So you can represent this as a into b, isn't it? It's a composite number. So you can represent as n equal to a into b. And let us assume without the loss of generality that a is less than or equal to b. Okay. We can assume, right? We can assume a less than or equal to b or a less than b. It's completely fine. So one of the numbers can be less than or equal to the other number. So <clears throat> now what I'm saying is, also, I'm assuming that, assume, now I'm assuming that, okay, now I'm assuming that a to be greater than or equal to root n, okay, a to be greater than or equal to root n, and let us consider this to be a less than b itself, okay, so if I'm saying that a greater than or equal to root n, and because I've told a is less than b, so I can say that b is greater than a, that's greater than or equal to root n, isn't it, so b should be greater than root n, so this can be written as a n equal to a into b, so that is root n, so that's actually greater than root n into root n, so that is actually equal to n, so we see, we are saying in the left side that n is actually equal to a into b, but in the right side, we see that an a into b is greater than n so it is a contradictory isn't it is it's a contradiction so the assumption that we have carried forward that this particular thing a is greater than or equal to root n that is where the you know mistake starts the wrong path starts so the assumption that we have uh, taken forward that's a greater than or equal to root n that must that is not a valid assumption so that must be like a should be less than or equal to root n okay a should be less than or equal to root n and also let us assume p is a prime factor of a okay let us assume p is a prime factor of a if p is a prime factor of a okay so there might be a case like a is equal to p if a is also prime if a is a prime number then it's a prime factor would be equal to itself if not if a is a composite number then p can be less than or less than a uh, so in that case this can be written as p less than a that's like less than or equal to root n so we can say that so p less than or to it. there's a chance that p can be equal to it so i can say that p less than or equal to root n so what is the thing that we have proved that p the prime factor that we have actually we are actually going to get from uh like that that's a root of n is actually less than or equal to root n but there is an exception that it's not like all the prime factors will be less than or equal to root n there will be one prime factor that there can be okay there can be one prime factor that's greater than root n so let us take an example of 14 okay when you divide 14 by 2 you get 7 okay so 2 is less than or less than root 14. It's fine. 2 is less than root 14. It's fine. But is 7 less than root 14? Is 7 less than root 14? No, it's not. So only 7 is the prime factor that of 14 that's greater than uh, like root 14. Okay, that's greater than root 14. So there, there are some cases. There's only one some cases where one of your prime factor would be only at most one can be greater than root 10. That's the only theorem that we can see here. So upon repeated division okay upon repeated division like uh if you take some other big number like in this case it's only 14 so when you divide by 14 by 2 you get 7 so you cannot divide by 7 anymore because you see that 2 is not divisible 2 doesn't divide 14 uh, exactly so you'll be getting some reminder so in that case you'll be stopping and you'll be going to some other number that's less than or equal to root 10 so root 14 in the sense that's actually equal to 3.7 or something so in computer language it's equal to 3 so you'll be looking out for 2 and 3 and after dividing by 2 you get 7 and if you're trying to check to divide with 3 that's not possible because it's going it's not going to divide exactly so you'll be leaving out that position but but you see that 7 is also a prime factor of 7. So that's the reason if you find a particular, uh, you know, after the repeated division, if you find that a number is not equal to 1, it's not equal to 1, okay, it's not equal to 1 or, or equal to 0, not equal to 1 or not equal to 0. In both of these cases, we can say that there there, the final number that you have got is actually a prime number. So you can actually evaluate it. You can actually take that into the consideration, okay. So that is the theorem here. That is what it's stating. So how are we going to proceed further? I hope you people understood the concept. The relevant articles are also I'm going to put in the description. Go through them. They are very understandable. If there are any doubts, please feel to come, comment in the comment section i'll be explaining them okay that's for sure so <clears throat> what are we doing going to do now so let us consider this example itself 378 okay first 378 so first n equal to 378 
we see that we'll start from n equal to 2 okay we'll start from n equal to 2 so i'll just uh, use a different thing n equal to 2 so once i divide n uh, 378 by 2 what is what what is that i'm going to get i'm going to get around uh, 1 and then 8 and then 9 okay 189 is what i'm going to get and now i see that can i divide 189 with 2 is that exactly divisible no it's not so i'll be looking out for the other number what's the other number that's left out n equal to 3 so i must go for n equal to 2 so i equal to 2 so let us take this to be i okay uh, how am i going to take the same variables nonsense so i equal to 2 okay i equal to 2 i equal to 3 so i am going from i equal to 2 to i less than or equal to root 10 okay so that's less than or uh, so that's basically less root 378 maybe it might be approximated to some 18 point something so it is it's less than or equal to 18 okay because 19 uh, 20 root is 400 19 root is uh, 381 so it must be less than that okay so let us consider i equal to 3 now so once you divide 189 by 3 what's what what's that you are going to get 63 again divide that by 3 okay because it's divisible by 3 right so again divide that by 3 you get 21 again divide that by 3 so you get 7 okay so because 63 is divisible 189 is divisible by 3 you have divided 63 is divisible by 3 you divided 21 is divisible by 3 you have divided so totally you have used 1 2 and 2 3 3 so far okay now we'll be going to the other prime factor uh, 5 5 doesn't divide 7 okay and then you go to 7 so 7 divide 7 exactly okay so you'll be using 1 7 and finally what's the number that you're going to left with so that's equal to 0 okay because 7 by 7 is what you'll be doing and that's 1 so yeah 1 is what you'll be reminded with so n equal to 1 is that you'll be getting okay so your number if it comes to be 1 that means every all the prime factors have exactly uh, like that we have encountered exactly divided then so there's no prime factor that's greater than you know square root of n that means there is no uh i that is greater than or equal to 18 and i being a prime factor okay i being a prime factor there's nothing like that that's greater than or equal to 18 for in the case of n equal to 378 okay i hope you people understood what are we trying to do the same thing will be putting in the code okay the same thing will be putting in the code now let us code the approach that we have actually framed so initially take int k to be some n okay and sum to be equal to zero where this sum will have hold all the you know some of the prime factor digits of the prime factors so first take a for loop for int i equal to 2 i less than or equal to square root of n okay and i plus plus so you'll be adding while your now n is exactly divisible by i okay while n modulo i is actually equal to 0 so you can just add that you know some of that digits into your sum so sum plus equal to if i declare some you know digits sum digits sum of i and then divide that by uh, divide that you know divide n by that i okay so while n ampersand i equal to zero first we are taking two two is a prime factor if it is then we'll it will keep dividing till you come up with some prime factor some number that has like the next thing like i equal to three is what you'll be dealing and then you'll not be dealing with i equal to four anymore because even if you come to i equal to four you have nothing to deal with that because you have evaluated all the numbers that are exactly divisible by two and all the numbers that are divisible by four are also indeed divisible by two so you'll be having only some odd numbers and that will be covered by three five etc etc okay so you are making sure you're doing so n divided by equal to i so once it's done and uh, if in case your n is greater than 1 so and n not equal to k so there are two conditions n greater than 1 why n greater than 1 why is why, why am i mentioning it because we have seen a case of 14 where your prime factor is 7 but that's not getting into consideration because our for loop is between i equal to 2 2 and square root of less than or equal to square root of n so that's only less than or equal to 3 2 and 3 is only we are covering we are not covering 7 so in that case we are doing it if n greater than 1 and also there is another case n not equal to k why is this so because take an example of n equal to 37 okay let us assume we have given the number 37 is 37 a composite number no it's a prime number so even you need to check for that because when you're doing this for loop there's going to be no change in n if in this for loop because n is actually equal to 37 so you have nothing to yeah you will be having no change in n your k will be equal to n so that means it's a prime number that's been given to you if your k is actually equal to n that is the reason we'll not be you know uh, going forward if it's actually equal to less like if it's actually n equal to k so sum plus equal to so you'll be adding digit sum of uh, this particular n okay so in case of 14 so you'll be only covering i equal to 2 here and you'll be having n to be 7 and now that 7 also must be considered because that's also prime factor right so and then uh, written sum equal to uh like you can uh, evaluate the same uh you know uh, apply the same function on k okay k is the original number that's been given so now let us declare in digit sum in digit uh, sum that it is int n so take int sum to be equal to 0 int sum to be equal to 0 while n ampersand uh, okay sorry why n why n is still defined add sum plus equal to uh, n uh, modulo 10 n modulo 10 and divide that by 10 okay so after that return sum that's it isn't it this is a very simple code to find the digits uh, some of the digits of a particular uh, uh, integer so we'll just run the code first and check if it's fine uh, and it's error free and now let us submit this it must work for sure uh, i think i'm free of any mistakes yeah it's fine it worked so great so i hope you people understood the code that we have actually figured out so and if you are talking about the time complexity so we are going to like what is a digit sum time complexity evaluates to that is actually o of log n because we are working on each and every digit we are taking each and every digit so it's basically log of n okay so log of n gives you the number of digits so it's log of n and for every number in the worst case you're going to every number so you can assume like that indeed you're not going but you can assume like that so you can say that uh, or even square root of n that's fine so square root of n 
log n. Okay, square root of n log n is what uh, the time complexity is, or n log n. Both are fine. It's, it's okay. So that's it. That's what we are doing. And uh, yeah, and also we're not taking any extra space. That's a very good point. We are not taking any extra space. We are just doing it in O of one constant space. Okay. So that's also one of the good test points. So this is one of the article that I thought of showing, uh, putting it in the description. So this article I'll be putting it. And also there's another article that is also that is also I'll be putting the link of that in the description. I actually referred this because just to uh, get an idea of what are the examples that they discussed. Because going before making a video, I need to make sure what are the things that I'm putting on the video are completely correct. Okay. I need to cross check my concepts as well. I'm a human at the end of the day. So I need to do all those things. So yeah. I'll be another, putting another uh, uh, article link as well. You can go through them. It's very good. These articles are too good. You can get all the things because it's from you know this particular uh, stack exchange. It's known for it. So that's it, guys. Uh, so thank you for watching. This is the first video that I'm actually appearing on. So it's like a tense thing sort of thing for me. But I hope you people enjoyed this video, understood the concepts, and able to frame this code on your own. If not, it's fine. Learn through the concepts. It actually helps you, you know, in a longer term. Fine. So yeah, that's all, guys. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned.